Appliances. Pleasingly convenient, usefully reliable, relentlessly unexciting. Appliances such as the kettle, the hairdryer, the toaster and the Toyota Starlet. Intended to evoke the glitz of a Hollywood prima donna, the name actually sounds more like a lavatorial air freshener. Fortunately, the Starlet's on the way out. Toyota is suddenly taking the Super Mini very seriously indeed, and it's designed a replacement on a piece of paper this clean. They've given us the Yaris. Nice to see Toyota hasn't abandoned the silly name tradition and picked a handle that rhymes with Paris to suggest something très chic and fashionable. From 2001, they'll even be making it in France. Still sounds like it belongs around the u bend though. On the other hand, the Starlet styling, which was a bit Van Ordinaire, has been junked in favour of something far more interesting. Have a look at that front grille. Weird. I think Toyota's gone a bit bonkers. Toyota's newfound bonkerness continues on the inside, starting with those little eyeball vents based on old pastry cutters. You sit up very high and in front of you there's this huge mound of plastic on the fascia, but no instruments, not as we know them, Jim. Instead, there's a digital display which floats in outer space in the middle and is viewed down this black hole. There are more black holes down here as well, saucy little cubbies for holding things. But I've got a gripe. Because this is a Toyota, the interior is available in the following range of colours. Rhinoceros. And look at the texture on that bit. Continuing the rhinoceros theme, that's been modelled on its bottom. The Yaris has a clever sliding rear seat. Enjoy limousine-sized legroom and a tiny boot, or no legs and room for your bags. So, plenty of Japanese TLC lavished on the styling. But what about the oily bits? It's not just clever shapes. Toyota decided, rightly in my view, that nothing short of an entirely new engine would do the trick. So that's what we got. It's a dinky little one-litre unit featuring Smarty Pants variable valve timing. VVTI, Toyota calls it. What it means is this, that with 67 brake horsepower, this is the most powerful one-litre car engine in the known universe. The suspension is of a very conventional design. Bits of bent metal, springs, that sort of thing. But again, it is all new and, claims Toyota, tuned to European tastes, whatever that means. The Yaris isn't a bad handler, actually, but it's a little bit light of control. It's a bit vague. It's a bit like a video game, but it is Japanese. Lots of people buy Super Minis and with their own money, so they are vital to many manufacturers. So no matter how good the Yaris is, it's how it fares against its rivals that really matters. Over to you, Julia. First up, the Punto. All right, it may be getting a bit old, but it's still got a good set of lungs on it and it's never been beaten for interior cabin space. You could swing a brace of cats in here and you could fit a family of lion cubs in the boot as well. The Punto was the best-selling car in Europe last year. That's thanks largely to the space and to good engines. But it isn't a spring chicken anymore and it's due to be replaced later this year. The car's a good little mover and it's Italian, so of course it's good looking as well. Cute nose, sexy rear with those distinctive high-set tail lights. <laughs> the Ford Fiesta, the car that is everywhere, like geography. It's essentially an old design and not over-blessed with space on the inside, but a comprehensive facelift in 1995 turned the Fiesta from a hopeless, plodding shopping trolley into one of the most entertaining hatchbacks you can buy. This one is fitted with an excellent 1.25-litre engine jointly developed with Yamaha. It's fizzy and it's fun. Trouble is, Fiestas with this engine start at about nine and a half grand. If you want to pay less, you get a wheezy old 1.3, not that distantly related to the one in your grandma's Ford Anglia. You get a modern engine as standard on all Yarises. Yari or Yari. Answers on a postcard. However, if it's French chic, you seek them voila the Renault Clio. Vavavum, as they say here in Milton Keynes. It's wieldy and it's chuckable. And even though its 1.2 litre engine is GB, that's grunt bereft, it revs hard to make up for the limited output. 
French chic becomes French cheap, however, when your eyes rest on the dashboard. If the Yaris was rhinoceros grey, then this is elephant gris. There's less plastic on share. Now, someone at Peugeot has a really deep understanding of what makes a car feel good to drive. If you drive a £25,000 Peugeot 406 Coupe, you'll know exactly what I mean. Fortunately, you'll still know what I mean if you drive this 206. It's very pert and eminently pointable. Trouble is, it's a bit of a triumph of style over space. It's terribly cramped in the back. And something else I don't really like is the gear stick. It's a bit flippity flop. Right, let's be sensible. Next to those flamboyant and flighty little French numbers, the VW Polo comes across as po-faced and German. This is the one litre L and it has 50 brake horsepower, which makes it rather slow. And you have to remember that the Yaris, same size engine remember, can rustle up 67 steaming, stamping and snorting nags to put at your disposal. But let's consider the real cost. Now the Polo is a very solidly made, classy piece of kit, and this is reflected in superb residual values. Buy the Polo and, rather like the Germans, you'll be laughing all the way to the Bundesbank. But in this car, do remember to leave plenty of time for your journey. So in the world of the Super Minis, the Yaris has got to beat the 206 in the style stakes, the Polo for pure fiscal sense, the Fiesta in the engine department, the Punto in the space race, and the Clio certain, well, je ne sais quoi. Well, whatever that is, the Yaris hasn't got it. But it does have quite a bit going for it. It's got a great engine. It's actually quite nice to drive. It's got some really good touches. That instrument binnacle, these handy cubby holes for all Julia's handbags and makeup and things. The interior space is quite useful. It's sensible. It's practical. So are shoe trees. If there's one thing the Yaris isn't, it's sexy. So I'd have the Clio. Size matters, but only if you've got a small one. And the pert little pug was my favourite, but nice try, Toyota.